rain falls or the relative humidity is high. The assay swell. The increased osmotic pressure causes the assay to burst. The spores are ejected into the air. In this way, Mycospherella graminicola spores are carried by the wind from plant to plant and from one field to the next. Thus, young wheat plantations are infected by the ascospores at an early stage. Only if the leaves stay moist for a prolonged period will the ascospore germinate and form a germ tube. Through a slit-like opening, the stoma, the germinal hypha penetrates into the interior of the leaf. So far, there are no visible symptoms of the disease. The young plants that are affected look lush and green. But subsequently, the products of metabolism of the developing fungal mycelium kill more and more of the leaf cells. The cells collapse and the chlorophyll necessary for photosynthesis is destroyed. As a result, the leaves become increasingly yellow and later brown. In this necrotic leaf tissue, the pycnidia develop, asexual fruiting bodies of the anamorph Septoria triticae. In the pycnidia, asexual pycnospores have formed. Water uptake causes them to swell. During dry weather, the surrounding tissue shrinks faster than the pycnidia. This mechanism causes the pycnospores in the form of mucilaginous tendrils to be pressed out of the opening in the pycnidium, the osteolum. The impact of raindrops breaks up the tendrils. The pycnospores contained in the splashes of rain are catapulted onto adjacent leaves and those directly above.